Today we'll show you the five games that should be on the Wii. And brand new details on Halo 3's upcoming legendary map packs. X-Play starts right now. X-Play, TV's most watched video game show. Today on X-Play, forget about the third party support. We'll show you five games that we want to see on the Nintendo Wii. Plus, climb into your Macs and get ready for battle. We'll get some FaceTime with Chris Taylor, the general behind the real-time strategy game Supreme Commander. And in the download, we'll run down all of the games you need to buy online. Ikaruga and more. You'll need every last life. It's game time. X-Play, where it's double experience point day. I'm Morgan Webb. That's two points for me. And I'm Adam Sessler. We're coming to you from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles on Wednesday, April 9th. And on today's show, we review Universe at War Earth Assault. Grab your Xbox 360 controller. This one's not just on the PC anymore. And Chris Did Holt is here to help you continue your skull hunt in Viking Battle for Asgard. Plus, we made a wish list. And on it are the games we want to come to the Wii. But first, let's get the day's top headlines in the gaming update. The release of the new Halo 3 Legendary Map Pack is less than one week away. Lucky for you, we have some shiny new screenshots of the action to come. First up, Avalanche is an icy tribute to Sidewinder, a fan favorite from Halo Combat Evolved. Next, are the dark and scary halls of Blackout. And finally, the lush jungle map called Ghost Town. It gives players a chance to share their true feelings with their fellow gamer after sinking a few needler spikes into their Mark IV armor. And be sure to tune in to X-Play this Friday night for exclusive info on the new Halo map, as well as what may be in store for Bungie. Interplay has confirmed their plans to pursue an MMO based on the Fallout universe. The idea for a Fallout MMO was originally announced back in 2004, but Interplay's lack of funding has put the project on hold. The developer is planning to create sequels to franchises like Earthworm Jim, Descent, and MDK to help raise funding. This is necessary because Interplay sold the Fallout IP to Bethesda in 2007. Now, while Bethesda is currently working on Fallout 3, Interplay, under certain conditions, could obtain the license to create and develop a Fallout MMO. Finally, a bit of sad news for PC gamers. The printed version for Games for Windows magazine has come to an end. The magazine was previously known as Computer Gaming World and have it in print for the last 27 years. The Games for Windows staff will now focus their operations towards online news while hoping to retain their fan base throughout the transition. The end of an era. Well, that's all for today's gaming update. Be sure to visit us on the web at gportv.com slash xplay to continue getting all of today's up-to-the-minute video game news. But now, let's go over to Morgan, who's got a review of some real-time strategy warfare. You like that? I do. Universe at War. Universe at War is warring alien races doing battle on our planet. Now, while the story's grounded on Earth, many other games take in the bigger picture. In today's X-List, we run down the top five games that take place in the universe. Starting off the list at number five is Fantasy Star Universe. This game is so big that Sega thinks it's necessary to charge 10 bucks a month to play online. Not on this planet. Coming in at number four is Toe Jam and Earl, the heartwarming story of what happens when interstellar AAA doesn't help you out. Number three is Sins of a Solar Empire, which is still great despite the fact that it doesn't have a real campaign. And number two is Mass Effect, the game I turn to when I need to see a little hot human on a sorry action. And number one is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, which features a storyline more completely told than all of the prequels. Sad, really. Mm. With environmental issues weighing so heavily on everyone's mind these days, why not download a game? There's no manufacturing, no packaging, and no shipping to leave any kind of carbon footprint. But if you download Yaris, a kitten dies. That train wreck aside, there are some great games available online. And here are some of the latest in this week's download. You like video games? You like the internet? Well, have I got some downloads for you. Thank me later. When all else fails and you've got nowhere else to turn, turn to the Rocket Man Axis of Evil. Rocket Man is based on a kid's strategy game, so you know it's really, really cool. But you won't need strategy here. Shoot and move and shoot and move. Timeless and average 
But if you can get to Xbox Live Arcade, you can be a Rocket Man. Yes, we've talked about Ikaruga on Xbox Live before, but now it's here. Finally and officially, it's here only on Xbox Live Arcade. We love it so. The best part of this vertical shoot 'em up is the ability to change colors. And no, we don't mean Michael Jackson. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm here all night. Everybody's going cruising, cruising USA. One word, ew. If this one looks familiar, congratulations, you remember the N64. It's a racing game that takes you all over this great country of ours. If you look real closely, you can see the political divisiveness that's tearing this country apart. Cruising USA is available for the Wii Virtual Console for 1,000 points. That should bring everybody together. Coming up on X-Play, Kristen Holt's got a cheat for Viking Battle for Asgard. She'll show you how to unlock one of the game's secrets without losing your head. We'll get some face time with gas-powered games' Chris Taylor for the latest on the explosive Supreme Commander. And later, we'll show you five games that we want to see on the Nintendo Wii. Stay with us. Hey dude, did you know that every day we dump 356,000 cell phones into landfills? That's no good. We can't keep doing that. Uh... Ugh. Dude, come on. For you, man. Hello? Ow. Ouch. Uh, later, dude. Ow. Ouch. Ow. Ouch. Ow. Welcome back to X-Play. On Monday, Kristen Holt gave you the location for the hidden skulls on the first island in Viking Battle for Asgard. She's back with us today and ready for round two. Yes, I am. Thank you, Morgan. Collect these six skulls in Kahlberg and you'll be well on your way to snagging that Skull Dagger 2 achievement. And you'll be doing your part in keeping Midgard tidy. It's a win-win scenario. <laughs> Let me just start off by saying that you have to collect all skulls before the battle at Darkwater because you won't be allowed to go back afterwards. Got it? Okay, the first skull can be found by entering Caldberg via the rope ladder on the right side of the fort. You should be able to see the skull immediately in the distance, but you'll have to clear out a couple of bad guys to get to it. Then head south until you reach the walkway that leads along the ocean. Check behind the crate for the second skull. Go to the end of that same walkway. Climb up the rope ladder. The third skull will be on your right. If you time it correctly, you should be able to sneak past the guards. Now make your way over to the laystone and clear out the bad guys. Stand with your back to it so that you can see the stairs going up. Go up the stairs, but only one flight, and chop some more arms off. <laughs> then turn right, and you'll run directly into skull numero cuatro. From the left laystone, go left and up the stairs again, where you'll find more baddies to kill. <laughs> After that, the fifth skull should be hiding from you on the right. The last skull is located right in the center of Caldberg. Locate the red shaman praying at the dead end and jump off the wall to your left. Bam! There it is. Be sure to check g4tv.com slash cheat for the latest tips and tricks. Right now, I'm going to send it back over to Adam. Why, thank you, Chris. And well, if you want to hear what I really think about games, if you do, and not in a well-dressed kind of way, check out Zester's Showbox. You can watch me get mad exclusively at g4tv.com slash showbox every Wednesday. This week, I talk about the myth that big video game releases kill box office receipts. So tune in or log on, whatever. I don't know what the term is. I'm going to break something whether you show up or not. When X Play returns, we take a look at our top five dream games for the week. Plus, we get some FaceTime with the always candid Chris Taylor and talk Supreme Commander. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Do it Greek style, and it won't cost you a cent. Indie Games begins in 60 seconds. Free gift. 
Welcome to Indie Games, a 60-second shot of free online fun. Maybe you're into tales of ancient battles when men won glory with strength and courage. Or maybe you saw 300 and all that oiled man flesh has you questioning some things that you thought you knew about yourself. Either way, check out Achilles. It's pretty sophisticated for a little browser game with controls for charging, blocking, and even some very gory decapitations. You fight your way through 15 levels of Greek warriors. Now, their armor and weapons never level up, but the AI does get progressively smarter as you go. And remember, nobody ever made Dakarkos by pulling an anaclasis in the middle of a mock game. All right, I'm out of here. Hit me up online at g4tv.com slash indie games for links to this and other great stuff. Until next time, I'm Kevin Pereira. And what do you want from nothing? All I knew. There's two Battlefield games coming out this year. Should I get Bad Company or should I get Battlefield 3? Welcome back to X Play. Thank you for your question, Keanu. This is, I think, the problem with these companies naming all of their games the same thing. People get confused. The consumer gets confused. They don't know what to buy. Right, because really the best answer to this question is what system do you want to play the game on? Right, well, Battlefield 3, a bad company, is for 360 and the PS3. Exactly. And of course, you know, well, and Battlefield 3, the proper one, well, that's right. made for the PC. We don't know much about that game, actually. Right. But really, if, if you have both, then you're going to probably have to wait and find out what Battle 3 is going to be like. But if you only have one or the other, the answer is already there. Well, and then Battlefield Heroes, of course, which is free, but then you're going to have to buy weapons. Yeah, and don't indulge EA on that crazy idea that you're going to buy, be able to get elements of a game that's ostensibly free, because that's just ridiculous. <laughs> well, if the universe of war isn't your cup of tea, maybe you should check out the latest RTS from Gas Pack. console that definitely can't play Supreme Commander is the Wii, but it is a juggernaut in terms of sales, which means, unfortunately, it's also king of the shovelware. Cheap games just looking to cash in on the popularity of the system. Well, we have some ideas for these developers, and they have nothing to do with Ninja Reflex 2. Take a look at our five dream games for the Wii. First up is pretty simple. We want a real ass-kicking martial arts game. I mean the kind of game where you use the nunchuck as a nunchuck. It's a little something we'd call Bruce Wee's Nunchuck Dojo. Hey oh. 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 Think back to what made you really feel like a man for the first time. I'm talking about the ceremony when a boy comes of age. Mo hell mo -e -le more. We'd love to see Muzzle Top, a bar mitzvah simulator. Oh mo chef. Vayeda bear Adonai. Hey! Here's something strange about the Wii. While the huge number of sports games have come out, we've yet to see a decent hockey game. That's why we came up with Wii Wii, French Canadian outdoor hockey. <laughs> Rhythm games are hot right now. What with the Guitar Hero and the rock band that all the kids are playing? Well, how about a new game that's all about timing? Comic timing. You can perform all the great stand-up comedy bits, from Henny Youngman to Dane Cook. <laughs> One out of four people have herpes. <laughs> Also with multiplayer. Who's on first? What's on second? I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to know. <laughs> Finally, here's a something that's not just a great gaming experience, it's also valuable job training for your adult life when you're living on the streets because you play Wii games for the previous five years. Yes, it's We're Homeless. Where's my bindle? Change. Ninja Fest 2 bursts into action with a night of feet up. Oh, and update. All right, now after the break, we take a look into the past as we revisit some classic X play and show you one of our most requested segments. But first, we have a trivia question for you. Thinking caps are optional. I have one. What was the destructible terrain system called in Red Faction? Was it A, Geomod Technology, B, Terraforming Engine, or C, Basalt Alteration System? We'll have the answer right after the break. Stay here. Fans and critics agree, Attack of the Show is time well wasted. One of the coolest shows on TV, Attack of the Show, weeknights at 7 and 10, only on G4. When? So available as a G4 podcast. 
Before the break, we asked, what was the destructible terrain system called in Red Faction? The answer is A, Geomod Technology. The original plan for this system was to allow players to tunnel through an entire level by using weapons to destroy the ground. Welcome back to X-Play. Kratos may be the god of war, but he's not above the law. He's fallible, just like the rest of us. To illustrate this point, we're pulling something out of the back of the cupboard and cracking it open. Well, that's its nostalgia, an X-Play classic. We get calls like this all the time. Domestic abuse situations. Old boyfriend comes back, doesn't like what he sees. Yeah. We'll take care of it. Yeah. Hey, hey, sir! Sure. Hands up, and would you sit in that chair? Would you sit down? Zelda of Hyrule? Yes. This is the man that's bothering you and your boyfriend? Yeah, that's right. He came in all crazy yeah, like, wait, I'm sorry, Zelda! Sir? Sir? I need you to calm down. Yeah. Now, who is this guy? <laughs> Sir, are you all right? Are you hurt? He hit me. Oh my god, sir, I did uh, not. Sir, I did it. I should have hit him. He hit me. Hands up. This is my hole. Put your hands on your head right now or this I will put a hole in you. I swear to god. Yeah. This is bull. Zelda, you tell him, Zelda. Oh, what's this? What's that, this? What do we got that's here? That's not mine. Oh, that's not this mine. Is yours, then that's is it? not mine. He gave it to me. It's his. Hey. Whoa, whoa, stop right there. Where are you going? Sykes, get on that. Don't. This hey, don't. Bull. I Hey, this is brutality! Oh, this is out! I got my handcuffs. Okay. Yeah. Ah! Going downtown. Yeah. Yeah. Get huh? this right, Kratos. You're going to jail. I'm sorry. Get out of the way. Don't take him anywhere. No, you baby. Get out of the way. I love you. Get out of the way. Get out of the And Kratos was truly Zelda's baby's daddy. But that is a tale for another day. Oh, my Hey, friend, <laughs> have you heard the good news about X-Play Replay? On today's show, we review Universe at War Earth Assault for the 360. The story here is pretty strong, but the move to the Xbox just doesn't quite fit. The text is hard to read, and we miss the keyboard. This RTS earns three stars out of five. It's with my deepest regret that I have to inform you that this show is just about over. But we'll be back tomorrow with another all-new X-Play at 8. And on our next show, we'll go head-to-head -to, -head to talk about the arrival of the DualShock 3 for the PS3. Is it worth the price tag? And does this mean that 6-axis functionality will actually disappear? Plus, Mr. Sark is back with the results of his latest gamer challenge for Rainbow Six Vegas 2. And be sure to tune in this Friday. We'll have an exclusive preview of The Force Unleashed. Someone's getting choked out. Plus, we'll have an all-access pass to Bungie for an exclusive look at Halo 3's legendary map pack. Now that is it for today, but we will see you next time. Yes.